there aren't that many role models that are celebrated in the art world of, you know, women who get older, art, artists or women who have families, you know, like we see a lot of bad boys and a lot of, you know, macho stories in the art world and, and that's fine, but you know, it's so much more interesting and diverse than, than what is celebrated most of the time. And I started thinking about the artwork that I love and what it influences me so much. And most of it is made by like super badass women, sculptors who are now in their 60s, 70s, 80s. And so I decided that it would be really great to see them every day when I went to the studio and to like have them look back at me, um, meaning, they exist, you know, and it's possible. And other people have accomplished this thing that I want to do, which is to still be kicking ass in the studio when I'm 80, you know, and it can be done. My name is Mia Perlman and I'm a sculptor from New York. I think that when you make public art, there has to be an openness to every type of experience, you know. Um, and for me, what's so compelling to me about making public art, whether it's permanent or just any kind of artwork in the public realm, is that you have a diverse audience that you will never have in an art gallery or in a museum. And to me, that's so wonderful and interesting. And that is what I feel passionate about. So when I'm making my work, what I really think about is trying to use forms and ideas that are universal. For the past eight years or so, I've been making these site-specific cut paper installations. And the reason I started using paper was just because it's available. I was just playing around in the studio and one thing led to another and paper was there and out came these giant installations. But it's a great material to work with because it's affordable, it's easy to transport, and it has a mind of its own. So it's like you're always reacting to something, you can't completely dominate it. Um, and then when I got the opportunity to do public art, I clearly had to move into a material that was more durable. Um, and so I'm lucky to work with an amazing fabricator, Polish Talix, and they're able to translate my paper models into these incredibly gigantic works out of steel and aluminum. So when MGM approached me about um, possibly doing this project, they mentioned that um, some years ago there was a tornado in Springfield that destroyed a big chunk of the downtown. And that's the part that, you know, where they're building this new complex. And so they were interested in my work because of this tornado and that there are similar forms in some of the, my previous projects. So I decided that I would try to reference the um, the power of that and the sort of excitement and the title of the piece is taken from an Emily Dickinson poem because Emily Dickinson lived in Springfield um, and she wrote a poem about a summer storm there and the title is from one line of it which is called it's going to be called The Flying Tidings World. Because my work is site specific the first thing I need is some sense of what the site is going to look like and then I start the same way I do my paperwork I, I use paper and make a scale model curving the paper and cutting it out the same way I normally would. And then I scan those cut pieces into the computer and make uh, vectors of them. And then those are used to generate, you know, to iterate the form and then generate metal pieces, which become the final scale model for the piece. You know, public art is most successful when the people who interact with it develop a relationship with it over time. And so I'm always trying to find that balance between, you know, what I think the content of the work is about and what people will find in it. MGM really has made a commitment to working with um, contemporary artists and, and that's very um, great for an artist because they really work with you to understand the space and, and give you the tools that you need to make the best project you can and there's just a limit to what an artist can do with their own budget and their limitations of their own studio, you know, the, what they can produce and how big of a piece they can make. So it's an incredible thing to, at the end of maybe a two-year journey, have a piece that's so far beyond anything you could have ever made by yourself.